Hello, welcome to the channel. This video is focused on one specific issue and that is changing the battery on an Avo Pro e-scooter. I hope you find it useful. This uh, battery was purchased from Campus Parts, uh, an eBay seller. It took around three days to arrive here in the UK. And the image for the battery was slightly different to the one that arrived. Um, but uh, these are the parts that I used to change the battery. Um, I used a heat gun, some shrink wrap. That is the new battery. Um, as I said, slightly different to the image that and was advertised on eBay. However, I did get in touch with Avo Pro directly and they were able to confirm to me that this was one of their supplied uh, batteries for, for the Avo Pro e-scooter. Um, the seller uh, breaks them back down and sells the parts. So yeah, just a few screwdrivers and a pot to put the screws in. It's often very difficult to work on e-scooters and just because of the shape and, and how they uh, um, fold. So um, the way that I tend to do it is to fold the scooter, pole to one side, and then um, I can lay the scooter down flat, enabling me access to the battery compartment. There are very many screws, as you can see, to the battery compartment, so it's really helpful to get a tub to put the screws in so you don't lose any and so uh, yeah a top tip there and um, this is the battery compartment uh, really there's only a couple of things in there the battery itself and the motherboard and i've changed the motherboard a while back uh, following a, a fault that i had so um, you can see that there's already some shrink wrap on some of the cables it will look slightly different to yours and i'll go on to explain that later on in this video. So just removing a couple of the old cable ties there that uh, helped keep the, uh, the loose cables um, neat and tidy. And there are only two cables that go to the battery. Uh, you'll see that uh, you can't really go wrong in terms of understanding which ones they are and uh, connecting them back up. If you've ever taken the battery cover off, you'll see um, lots of this black plastic, which is the waterproofing that's been used on most of the connectors. So I've, I've found that the best way to remove this is a heat gun just on quite a low setting and that melts the waterproof plastic coating, as you can see there and it's very easy to remove um, from the, the moment that the, the plastic starts to, to melt. It's a bit sticky and it, and it is really, really messy, but it's the easiest way to, um, to get rid of that, uh, that coating. And you'll see later that it's much easier to, um, when you reconnect the battery up, to use shrink wrap rather than the, um, try and reapply the black plastic waterproofing. but it is incredibly messy, as you can see. So just removing the last parts of the plastic coating there. And then that will enable me to move on to remove the shrink wrap from the other main connector. So enough of the coating there removed to be able to take the connectors apart. That's that's the most important and, and crucial element to this. Um, so yeah, I, as I said, I put some shrink wrap um, previously on uh, the battery connector here. So um, just removing it, and I think it just shows how effective the shrink wrap is. It's pretty difficult to to take off. Take a lot of care um, cutting it off if uh, if you have used shrink wrap. So the two connectors um, you will see, uh, are, uh, you can only plug them back in uh, one, one way. You can't make any mistakes in, in how you uh, connect them back together. So two lots of connectors for the battery. Um, this is the new battery. And as I said, it's been removed from a brand new scooter and stripped down for parts. So this again had some of the black plastic waterproof coating on. So 
thought it would be useful just to remove that and make sure that the shrink wrap has got something to um, adhere to. Um, but yeah, once again, a very messy job, um, but worth doing, worth doing well. So we're at that point now where you can disconnect uh, the battery, um, move the cables out of the way and take the battery, the old battery out, I should say. And it's held, uh, held in by three spacers um, which um, hold the battery in pretty tightly really. So you can see there's one of the spacers and the battery compartment uh, is completely exposed now. So you can see um, once the battery's out, um, there's not an awful lot of space really, um, but that's the old battery that's been removed there. So applying the new shrink wrap, it's always much easier to put the shrink wrap on the scooter side rather than on the battery side. You've got more cable to, um, to put the shrink wrap onto. So then again, you can see both connectors, they will only connect onto the battery the right way. You can't make any mistakes there. So here's the new battery going in. You can see it's really well padded. Just making sure that that's uh, lining up correctly. And this is the new battery being connected up. As I said, it can only go one way. So that's the, the main connectors to the battery that drives the front wheel. And then this goes to the charging port. And that's it, it's a much, much simpler task than I think you could ever imagine really. So it's not, uh, not too difficult a task. and. You know, although there's a lot of cables and it looks complicated, you know, don't let it put you off. So I'm just putting the shrink wrap back over where the connectors um, are now fully connected together and just trying to make sure that the, the shrink wrap is somewhere around the, the middle so the connectors are hitting the middle of the, the shrink wrap there. So back on with the heat gun on a, a very low setting, you don't need to um, have much heat going and the shrink wrap works very effectively. So just the uh, two lots of connectors there as you can see. And it's as simple as that. The next task really is just to get uh, all the, the cables back together neatly and tidy using a couple of cable ties. And that is it. So just two cable ties will hold all of the cables neatly and tidy in place. And it's important to get this part right so you don't get any cables trapped when the lid goes back onto the bottom of the battery compartment. As I said, definitely worth taking your time here. Just one more cable tie to go. So you can see there's plenty of room for the tray to go back on. Just snipping the cable ties off. And that's pretty neat. So back on with the tray. Once the battery um, has been wedged back in place. So there's three spaces, two fat ones and one thin one. So the thin one goes at the back and that stops the battery from hitting the cable where the, it connects up to the rear brake light. And these are really tight actually, so the two fatter ones 
um, do take a bit of wedging in so make sure that they go down and um, below the surface of the battery so you can get the tray on properly. Happy with that. So there's the tray on and back in with all of the screws that need to go back in. This is probably the part of the job that takes the longest really is making sure that all the screws go in and that you don't cross thread them so yeah again once take a bit of care not to cross thread and it's worth just going round all of the screws just once more so first switch on we've got all of the battery um, lit up that wasn't the case um, to begin with and um, there were it was only four bars showing and the battery is charging up now. So let's see how it goes. It certainly felt like the on this first test ride the battery was working very effectively um, back up to 19 miles an hour according to the speedo so yeah very very happy to have replaced the battery without any drama any difficulties and sort of back down this gradient towards home all good so there you go battery successfully changed and tested I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful and as always please like and please subscribe to the channel.